What's up guys? Godzilla back again. Uh, it's been a long time since I made a video. That's because there really hasn't been much going on with the car. Um, still waiting on the engine builder to uh, finish up and then I guess uh, just been busy with family life. Got three kids, two of them in sports and a full-time job. So yeah, takes up most of my time. But I've uh, been kind of working on my uh, fuel system. Been making lines. It's uh, kind of tedious, but I figured I'd uh, show you guys a little update of what I've got going on so far, and I'll show you how I make the um, the lines, like putting the fittings on the lines and making them, you know, a complete line to uh, go from one point to another. Uh, they're PTFE lines, so they're they're rated for E85, and let's get into it. All right, guys, so this is kind of what I was thinking. Um, the board back here is just kind of sitting there. Um, basically, I have um, filters. These are 40 micron uh, filters, and then I have uh, check valves. So basically, um, when the main pump is pumping, um, the fuel won't try to go down into the... Uh, the T fitting and then come back up into here so it'll get stopped right there and then the fuel will just keep going and um, this is kind of what I was thinking I'm not sure exactly I think I'm gonna see what this looks like after I make some lines um, so basically we have the, the stock pump feeding the tank and then the two pumps coming out feeding down into here going under the car and to the front and then going to the fuel rail and out of the fuel rail into the fuel pressure regulator and then out of the fuel pressure regulator coming back it'll go through the flex fuel sensor and then come into here and get returned back into the tank and then this will go down into here as a return so there's not a whole lot of room in here for these, at least to try and keep it somewhat organized. Um, but what I think I'm going to do is basically just have the lines go this way and kind of have all the lines sweeping this way. Except for this one. This will just go straight down into there. And I'm going to drill some holes in here and just have them go down in there. So yeah, anyway, I'm going to show you how I make these lines. Alright, so I've got my Dash 6 hose here. And I made a mark, and then I put a piece of tape around it um, where the mark is, like, halfway. And then I'm going to use my big old cutters here to, to cut this in, like, a, a quick motion. Uh, you can also use, like, a, um, a saw or, like a, um, like, a circular saw, like a... I don't remember what it's called. Anyway, um cut off disc but that kind of puts like shavings and stuff so I just like using this I've had luck with it so far um, don't mind the mess I'm not very organized when it comes to stuff like this doing repetitive things um, so basically I'm just gonna cut here and then we'll go to the next step all right so basically just get this kind of lined up about halfway and you want to get it as straight as possible and then one quick go and then as you can see that is not straight I usually actually hold it between my legs like this and cut it but I can't really record that way <laughs> so I'm gonna have to recut this line um, to make it straight so there we go now it's straight just use my shears right there I guess they're called shears I don't know metal cutters these things come in very good, uh, very handy. So what we're going to do is um, take the tape off and then we have to spread the um, um, metal away from it and then we'll put the barb on there and I'll show you all that. 
It's basically how I measured was I left the fitting on and took the uh, end part off and the line will slide onto this piece right here. So basically you want to measure from here and then over to the other end like that. So that's how you measure for these. All right, so as you can see, I have the tape off of there. Uh, I forgot to put the fitting on, but it shouldn't be too bad right now. Just kind of got to... Well, actually, you know what? I still have the other end taped up, so you can just slide the fitting. Come on. Slide the fitting on. There you go. Like that. So now that we have the fitting on, just have a little like hook tool here. And um, kind of just shimmy this around like this. I swear to God, my dog. She was not barking at all until I started recording. So I just kind of get it so that it's spread out a little bit, like that. And then I take like a flathead screwdriver and try and go around like this and spread it out even more. Because we're going to need to get the barb down over this um, Teflon line and have enough room to have it poke out the end a little bit. Now that's for these fittings. There's different fittings where they kind of like cap onto it. So, you know, just follow the instructions on whichever fittings you have. These fittings are from siliconeintakes.com. So, they're kind of proprietary, I guess. So this is the barb. And you'll see it has like a taper on one end that taper goes away from the fitting so it kind of goes down on there I don't know how easy that is to see or not but usually I like to take my um, needle nose pliers and just kind of go like this to round it out make it a little more even And then I also need to trim away some of the um, sheathing here because the fitting does not like to go up very far with too much sheathing. You need to leave some because it helps make the fitting tight around the barb. So we put the barb on there. Like so. And we just keep pushing it until just a little bit sticks out past the end there. Like so. Okay. And then what I do is I'm not quite sure how to help you with that. Uh, Alexa thought I was talking to her. So then I just take some WD-40. Come on, not a lot, just a little bit on the end there. Just to lube it up, help it go in. And then just push straight down. And there you go. It's in there. Focus. So anyway, now the tough part is to get this fitting up over these um, pieces of sheathing and to bite some threads. The Dash 8 lines are a lot easier. Um, these Dash 6, everything's just so small. 
So I'm going to try and trim some of that more away. And I use these. You put these in a in a vise and it'll hold the line for you. And that way you, get, you can get some leverage. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so what I had to do was basically put this in here, clamp it down so that it's biting onto this piece, and then push up on this and pull up on the the line itself to get enough force to push this past the uh, sheathing just enough to where I got the um, threads finally started on this thing. So now you uh, put this tool in here like that or if you have two wrenches um, these are AN wrenches they're pretty nice because they don't scuff up the aluminum on it and then you can just you know tighten it down like that but if you have these then might as well use it so take this and just Tighten it down until it's good and tight. So there you go. That's one side done. And then you just repeat that for the other side. Alright, so basically we're going to be putting it onto this right here. Just kind of put it on there, not all the way yet, and then Put it on to the end of this. There we go. Now we can tighten this down all the way. And we have a line. Cool. Now we just need to make another one for right there. There we go. Sweet. All right, guys. So now I'm going to pressure test my lines. I've got about 80 pounds in the air compressor. I uh, figure, you know, with about 43 to 45 base uh, fuel pressure, and then if I run like, you know, 35 pounds or 30 pounds of boost, that would be, you know, like 70, uh, 75 psi. So if the lines can hold 80 psi, then it should be good, theoretically. All right. So um, how I pressure test the uh, lines. Uh, basically have like a, a cap on one end and then another cap but it has a threaded port here that I put basically a valve stem in for like bicycle type uh, connection bicycle tire um, I got that also from uh, siliconeintakes.com um, so basically I'm just gonna take my air compressor and uh, put air into it and listen for leaks. So it'll fill up real quick. So here we go. All right. So that's filled with 80 pounds of pressure right now. So no leaks. And just to show you, it's still holding air, you know, Come up. There you go. So that line is good. So let's test the next one. You don't need them to be super tight because of the way that AN fittings work. It's got that, you know, curved inlet, and then the, the fitting goes in there and goes against the wall, so locks it in. Oh, here we go. That's just this. Nope. 
There you go. So that line's good. All right. That little line was tough to make. Getting those fittings on there. That short little piece. But it's pressure tested and it's working. So, sweet. Hey. 